When I first meet with clients, they almost always ask this question, how can I keep my spouse out of the house? Who stays and who leaves the marital home is a very important issue in the early stages of every divorce. Hi, my name is Miles Mason. I'm a divorce lawyer in Tennessee and the founder of the Miles Mason Family Law Group. We represent clients in the greater Memphis, Collierville, Germantown, and Bartlett, Tennessee areas. This message is about what you can do to keep your spouse out of the house. Here's a typical situation. The spouses are in constant conflict and can't live under the same roof any longer, so they separate. If they have children, one parent is likely to stay in the home with the kids, the other parent moves out. That's not always the case, but it happens often enough. If only that were the end of it. The other parent moved out, but keeps, com be keeps coming back to return to collect bedding, towels, pots and pans, and other stuff. As far as the other parent is concerned, he or she is entitled to furnish a new apartment, come back for the sofa, chairs, dresser, and for some reading lamps. He or she needs tools and equipment too, so things are get taken out from the garage. Every time the remaining resident spouse comes home from work, something else is missing from the house. There are dirty dishes in the sink. The other parent has used the home computer, done laundry, and taken a shower. The resident spouse wants to stop the other parent from taking things and to keep them out of the house. How can you keep your spouse out of your home? Here's my first concern. Are you the victim of domestic violence? If there is abuse, then seek an order of protection. That order prohibits your spouse from approach, approaching you. It's an injunction issued by the court. If you're in the house and your spouse approaches and there's an order of protection, you can have him or her arrested for violating the court's order of protection. Here's the basic process for obtaining a protective order. Step one, you file a petition with the court requesting a protective order. This is a civil proceeding, but for safety reasons, your spouse is not notified of the petition and is not present if you're seeking an ex parte order. Step two, the judge reviews the petition for temporary and permanent relief. Based on the petition and ex parte hearing with you, a judge may grant a temporary order, order of protection. That temporary order is effective only for 15 days, but it is effective upon serving of your spouse. A hearing date must be set within 15 days on the uh, extended order in terms of making it a permanent order of protection. Your spouse is served with both the order of protection and the notice of hearing. In the meantime, under the temporary protective order, your spouse must stay away from you and must stay away from where you live. Step three, at the full hearing, you can present any evidence of domestic violence. You can also bring witnesses to testify about what they know and have observed. If the judge extends the order of protection, making it permanent, then your spouse must continue to stay away from you for at least a year. If your spouse violates the order of protection, call the police. Violation of the protection or order, excuse me, violation of the order of protection is a crime. What else can you do to keep your spouse out of the house? There are, there are options. We don't have criminal trespass in Tennessee per se. The spouse who moves out but returns at will is not trespassing. Often they're an owner of the home. It is not a crime unless there's an order of protection barring his or her return. So what can you do? First, notify your spouse to stay away from the residence. Put it in writing and keep a copy for your file. Or have your lawyer send that letter. Tell your spouse to keep away. Don't be wishy-washy or waffle on your decision later. Second, consider changing the locks and security codes. This is not as clear cut as you might think. Some family lawyers may advise changing the locks immediately along with security codes and garage door openers. Talk to your lawyer as soon as your spouse moves out and discuss the advantages and disadvantages. And simply wait and deal with the situation only when the other spouse complains about access. That is seeking court order permission to exclude the other spouse. There are other ways to handle it. There are important considerations though. Expenses associated with the marital home must be paid until the divorce is finished. How will the mortgage, utilities, and upkeep be paid? If the spouses can agree on who pays what expenses, then great. 
If they can't, then one or both may file a motion asking the court to order payment of expenses and allocate those expenses between the spouses pending the divorce being final. The order, again, that allocates these costs between the spouses they often considers the income of the parties. And if one party makes a lot more than the other, that will certainly be a major issue in that decision. This is where things get sticky. In court, the excluded spouse, the one excluded from the residence by court order, may have an advantage when it comes to sharing those expenses. That's because the spouse living in the home sought to exclude the other spouse. It may be, depending on the circumstances, it may be unfair to kick a spouse out of the house, then make him or her pay every dime of the expenses, especially if there was no adultery, no violence, or no wrongdoing. On the other hand, just moving out, say to be with a boyfriend, will not excuse the, sp will not excuse the spouse's financial obligations. Talk to your lawyer. Make a strategic decision based on your situation and your goals. Don't do something just because your neighbor did something or your best friend did something. Finally, take a look at some of my related questions and uh, questions answered on my divorce FAQs page. I'm Miles Mason. Thanks for joining me.